Halo Survival is a fan-made audio drama produced using assets from the Halo universe. These assets are owned by Free for Free Industries and Microsoft. We hope you enjoy this audio production. Halo Survival A fan-made audio drama produced by Podcast Evolved. Episode 2 Briefing Eight hours earlier The Office of Naval Intelligence had long ago become aware of the tactical value of the Halo installations following the events of the Battle of Installation 04. While subsequent co-collaboration relationships with the Swords of Sanghelios were strenuous at best, Oni had still ensured they had plenty of resources positioned near enough to the rings to deploy assets rapidly if the need ever arrived. In the wake of the created uprising, Oni had placed enough facilities on High Alert around the galaxy, ensuring the UNSC assets were ready to be deployed at a moment's notice. Oni Midpoint Station was one such valuable facility, a ship retrofitting station positioned close enough to Zeta Halo to provide assistance to UNSC science and security teams on the ring in the event of an incident. The usually quiet facility was alive with activity today. Flatbed warthogs maneuvered through the busy hallways, and the UNSC crew busied themselves with activities. In the main hangar, an Oni Preller, the UNSC Swift Gist, was being worked on by a team of UNSC technicians who moved busily around the vehicle, hammering things into place and wielding on new pieces of equipment. Deeper in the station, Captain Chris Cooper walked down a corridor, Sergeant Maria Holt keeping the brisk pace at his side. I don't like it. The created are causing chaos around the galaxy, and we're here at a backwater UNSC station near a halo ring which hasn't seen any activity for weeks. We should be on the front lines. I agree, but there isn't much we can do about it right now. Only are stretched thin as it is. We have special forces playing special delivery wherever is possible right now. Hell, word around the station is they haven't heard from Osman or Black Box in weeks. Damn. Cooper sighed, opening a briefing folder which was in his hands. He began to read through the documents. Any idea why these signal jamming devices are so vital to the work they're doing on Zeta? Negative, but I bet we're about to find out. The pair walked past a couple of marines who nodded to them, and then entered a large briefing room. The rest of Rhino Squad, the only unit which Cooper commanded, were already sitting in the chairs, waiting for them. Hey, Cap. Good to see you at last. Yeah. We were worried you'd get lost. Cooper shook his head. Alongside the two male marines, Private Natalie Vorstock also sat in another one of the theater-style chairs in the briefing room, spinning around from a sniper rifle around her fingers and staring at it intently. The captain turned from the marines to greet a tall man in a white lab coat. Dr. Talbot, I'm Captain Chris Cooper and this is Sergeant Maria Holt. Rhino Squadron were ordered to report here for a briefing on a special operations, I believe? Yes, that's right, Captain. I have some important work which I need an escort for. You'll learn more in a moment. Please, take a seat. The doctor motioned to the seats. What's with the secrecy? It's all very necessary, I assure you. Security protocol, Theta-16. There was a beep, and the sliding door to the room hissed shut, and locked with a click, whilst the lights within the briefing room began to dim. At the same time, there was a static crackle as the marines noticed that their comms devices were disconnected. Cooper shot Talbot an alarmed look. We can't be too careful. Smart AI end up everywhere. The projector whirred into life, and a diagram of a metallic item titled as Signal Dampening Model 14 appeared on the screen in front of the marines. The large metallic object was a freestanding item, which appeared to have a control console on it and it was also mounted with various solar power energy generators. It was heavy grey tech, that much was for sure. As you are all fully aware now, Cortana's Guardians have attacked UNSC facilities across the galaxy and are continuing to stamp out any indication of resistance. All remaining UNSC facilities are being ordered to minimal operations where possible, and any moving command bases, like the Infinity, are off the grid. We know that superluminal communications spike her interest, so communicating effectively is near impossible right now. In short, we're on our own, and Midpoint Station will not stay that way for long. We know Cortana's Guardians have been frequenting the Halo Rings all throughout the galaxy. Doesn't surprise me. 
Cyber Lady is a psychopath. Stow it. <laughs> Thank you for that, Marine. As I was saying, we know that Cortana's guardians have been frequenting the Halo installations. Oni currently has a high-level operation on Zeta Halo, researching the depths of the Forerunner complexes, including studies on the artificial intelligence constructs, which we refer to as Sentinels. Right now, our scientists are deep in their research. And if Cortana senses what they are up to, then we may lose a vital shot at understanding the assets which she has under her control. We can't risk one of their experiments accidentally triggering a signal which will bring them to her attention. So we need to take action to protect their work. This is where the signal dampening module you'll see detailed on the screen comes in. Talbot pressed a button on a clicker in his hand, and the screen changed to an image of several UNSC crates stowed in a cargo bay. These were loaded about the UNFC Swift Gist when she came aboard this station. She is currently being retrofitted with similar technology to the dampeners to allow us to use her without being detected. I don't like where this is going. O'Neill mumbled. If we can set up a network of signal dampening modules on Zeta Halo, then we can hide the work which Oni are doing on the ring, and can prevent Cortana from picking our comms up from orbit. This will mean that we can continue our work on the ring, and can potentially find a way to fight back more effectively. Rhino Squad are tasked with escorting both the Precious Cargo and I to Zeta Halo, where we will establish this network on the ground. We will then rendezvous with the facility commanders on the ground, check the network is functioning, and get out before Cortana is any the wiser. Seems like an important op, Doc. Why Rhino? The doctor let out a long sigh. There is scarcely anyone else left. Or if they are left, we don't have a chance in hell at contacting them. This can't wait till Osmond or someone else is back online. We have to do this op, and we have to do it now. Intel suggests the Guardian found in this system has been dispatched to another location. What's left of command estimates that we have 12 hours to get boots on the ground and get out before it returns. This operation is of imminent importance. Section Commander Fredericks has already approved it. Any questions? Yeah, I've got one, Doc. How do we know this will work? We don't, but we don't have time to test it. This is the best science we have available right now based on how we believe the Guardians work. We have to try. If we don't, months of research may be lost. All I need to know, Doc, when it comes to escort missions like this, I would rather work with you than somebody like Dr. Halsey. Agreed. Marines, head to the armory and pack your bags. Travel light, but make sure you're equipped for a field deployment. Rendezvous on the hangar deck in 30 minutes and we'll get ready to depart. Yes, yes sir. sir! The lights brightened and the door slid open as the Marines walked out. Talbert powered off the screen and began to pack the rucksack he had propped up in the corner of the room, scooping up items from a podium in front of the screen. Thirty minutes later, Rhino Squad were beginning to load up onto the UNSC Swift Gist. The Prowler was a larger variant, and so some of the deck crew were loading a pair of Warthogs with chain gun turrets into the back of the vehicle's cargo deck, so the team had transportation once they arrived on the ring. Other supplies, like MREs and medical supplies, were also being loaded onto the vehicle. Dr. Talbot and Captain Chris Cooper were the last pair to enter the hangar talking under their breaths as they approached the vehicle. You know Cortana isn't the only one out here, right? Oni are aware of other factions at play, yes. So you know this has the potential to go ass up really quickly. Captain, this isn't my first rodeo. He turned and walked towards the prowler. The captain broke into a light jog and followed him up the ramp. A few moments later, the deckhands cleared the hangar and stole their equipment. There was a gentle buzz as the engines of the Prowler began to glow a bright, vivid blue. Suddenly, there was a sharp roar as the vehicle tore into the air and shot out of the hangar into the black void beyond. You have been listening to Halo Survival, a fan-made audio drama produced by Podcast Evolved and narrated by Henry Paul David. The voice of Captain Chris Cooper was performed by Cam 4K Studios. The voice of Sergeant Maria Holt was performed by Kirsty for Halo. The voice of Private Matthew Wisner was performed by Matthew Keel. The voice of Private Dan O'Neill was performed by Demetrius Hazel. The voice of Dr. Nate Talbot was performed by William Boyer. The voice of Private Natalie Vorstock was performed by Samantha Endress. Guest starring Brad Joss and Tim Piper. Halo Survival was written by Thomas Fishenden and Colin Perkins. Audio drama created using assets from the Halo video games, and music from both the games and the podcast Evolved original album. Thank you for listening, and Evolved.